Hi everybody. Uh, I've been asked a number of times about sensor size and relationship to image quality and things like that. And the uh, the questions arisen: Does a does the sensor size does a full frame sensor take a better picture than a crop sensor? And the answer to that is that the lenses are operate differently on a full frame sensor. If it's a full frame sen full frame designed lens, if it's a 35 millimeter lens design operating on a crop sensor camera, it works differently. Uh, this white box on this orange background is 23.4 millimeters by, by 15.6 millimeters. That's the size of the Pentax K7 crop sensor. If you have a Canon, it's a little bit smaller, uh, uh, the sensor is. <coughs> If you're using a micro four thirds camera, a Pentax Q, a Nikon J, cameras like that, then the sensor is even smaller than this. I didn't go uh, into uh, smaller sensors than this. This was the smallest that I'm going to show you for this demonstration. If you size this next to a full frame sensor, a full frame sensor is 24 millimeters by 36, which is the same size as a 35 millimeter negative. What I just turned on is the full frame sensor size. <coughs> in relationship to the APS-C sensor in the K7. Now, back in the day, there were lots of different film sizes. The 35 millimeter was the smallest professional film size. There were 110 and disc and 126 different types of cartridge films that were just for fun and not for professional use at all. But larger formats, this was called small format. Medium format was considered 4x4 four four up to about 6x9 and 4x4 four four meant 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, which is this size. Uh, the next size up, the next common size up is 60 by 45, 60 millimeters by 45, <coughs> 60 millimeters by 45 millimeters. And this was a very popular professional size image because it had the same aspect ratio as the, um, as the 35 millimeter. We're going to do a free transform here. I'm going to hold down shift. And the 6x45 was a very popular, uh, a very popular size because it had a similar aspect ratio to the 35 millimeter, uh, to the 35 millimeter frame. I'm going to show you here with a. I'm going to go into free transform. I'm going to hold down shift to make sure that this stays the, at the same proportion. And you can see by extending it to the size of the 645 negative, the 645 just gives you a little bit more space in there. And uh, so you can easily crop the 6 by 45 negative to the same aspect ratio as the 35. The next size up from 645, the next common size, was 6 by 6, 60 by 60, or also called 2 and a quarter by 2 and a quarter. And it was another square, uh, square size, and it was 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Now, for reference, 645 is about as big a digital sensor as you can get. This is what you'll find in like a Hasselblad uh, or, or a Pentax 645D. Beyond that, uh, I'm unaware of larger digital sensors. There are larger scanner backs, but that's a different type of technology. So beyond this, for the time being, at the time of this recording especially, there are no larger digital sensors than the 645. So 6x6 six six negatives were very popular. A lot of professional cameras used 6x6, six six, the Pentacon 6, for instance, Mamiya's, um, a number of TLRs, twin lens reflex cameras, that were used in World War II, for instance, uh, to document to document the um, 
the war, the Mamiya C3 was a very popular TLR, and I believe it was a 6x6. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. The next size up from 6x6 was a 6x7, such as the Pentax 67 or 6x7 cameras. You could also get 6x7 roll film adapters for large format cameras, and there were a number of plate cameras and other old cameras that took 6x7 images. It's a very usable image size, although some people really don't like it. I don't understand why, but it, it's got a unique aspect ratio in and among the different common image sizes. The next size larger from 6x7 was 6x9, and this had also a very similar aspect ratio to 35 millimeter. In fact, I take that back, it has the exact same aspect ratio as 35 millimeter. The only difference is that instead of being 36 by 24 millimeters, it's 60 by 90 millimeters. It's an enormous, enormous negative. There's all kinds of information on it and a good 6x9 camera, and there are some professional 6x9 cameras, like there's a Fuji, I forget the model number of, take extremely wonderful photos with great tones and colors and basically no grain as long as the film's in good condition. Uh, 6x9 is a great format. It's actually one of my favorite large format uh, um, it's actually one of my favorite large format sizes. 6x9 is getting, a lot of people will call it medium format because it's taken with 120 film just like 645, 6x6, and 6x7 and, and other off sizes like 6x12 and 6x24. But 6x9 is, is large enough that it can be used for a lot of high-end professional work. The last image size we're going to look at is the smallest official large format image size. And large format begins with 4x5, which is 4 inches by 5 inches. Uh, in metric, it's 101.6 millimeters by 127 millimeters. Beyond 4x5, four, four there's 5x7 and 8x10, 11x14, 11x17, 20x24, that's kind of ridiculous. And in fact online the other day I saw a camera that takes negatives which are 60 inches by 48 inches and uh, that's mind-boggling to me actually. But for, so, so this chart here shows you the relationship in image size. Now, how do so let, to try and understand how different film and sensor film sizes worked and, and APS comes from uh, an old antiquated unused film size called uh, advanced photo system APS and to understand how this translates roughly into image quality let's pretend that we're going to calculate megapixels for film size it's not this isn't really a, a one-to-one -one comparison that we're doing here this is for conceptual purposes only but let's pretend that the 15.6 is our millimeter size 15.6 by 23.4 let's pretend that there's a hundred rows of pixels per millimeter which would be 1560 times uh, 2340 so an eight let's let's pretend that your APS-C sensor is about four megapixels which is a really low resolution sensor I recognize but we're, we're just again going here to show you the the uh, the concept behind this well, at the same resolution, a, uh, a full frame sensor would be 2400 times 3600, or about 8.6 megapixels. The next size up from that was 4x4, which would be a 16 megapixel type image. So you can see as the sensor, as the film size now, we're, we're into film sizes basically except for 645, increase, the amount of information increases. But because the film's actually changing size with this, it's not just cramming more pixels into the same size, which makes each each pixel smaller and causes an increase in diffraction at lower f-stops what we're getting is more information on the same film. So 
let's pretend that we have 60 by 45, which would be 6,000 times 4,500. So now we're, let's pretend that's a 27 megapixel image. So you can see already APS-C if that was a 4. If we had an APS-C image that was 4 megapixels, an equivalent 645 would be 27 megapixels. 6 by 6, 36 megapixels. 6 by 7, 42. 6 by 9, 54. 4 by 5, 129, or thereabouts. A lot, at any rate. Now that's not, like I said, that's not an apples to apples comparison, it's just for concept. To show you that larger films were the old equivalent of megapixels, but the larger cameras had added advantages that the smaller cameras didn't. Uh, things like uh, standard movement and a perspective control built into the camera and you didn't have to buy a stupidly expensive lens to get that sort of thing. Also large format films were uh, could be enlarged to greater to, to, to greater sizes without losing any resolution and in fact a 4x5 negative on film will still outshoot any digital camera I've ever seen. Uh, Hasselblad or even or Pentax 645 those get really really darn close but 645 uh, 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 large format cameras have functionality built into the cameras like I said the movement which allow them to outshoot any any handheld system so anyway this was just a conceptual demonstration of sensor versus film size and how to understand the the differences that that image size has in terms of image quality if you uh, if this was helpful, please leave me a uh, please give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe to get more videos in the future. If this if was confusing, please leave me a comment, and I'll see what I can do to unmuck the mess that this makes. And uh, if you have any requests for videos, let me know. And if I have the equipment and technical knowledge, I'd be more than happy to film the video uh, to to explain it. And lastly, thank you guys for watching.